hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this very exciting video because i am going to the london book fair pause for some very excited very just like yeah just excited feelings i cannot wait i am in london and i'm about to go over and i am just filled with anticipation I have no idea what to expect. I have a list of seminars that I want to attend on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday before I go, but maybe I should give you a quick explanation what London Book Fair is. So, London Book Fair is where all the big publishers and the smaller ones and the indie ones and the independent ones all come together to talk about books, to have meetings, to create business, to inspire, innovate, motivate, hopefuls and people already in the industry. And I can't wait. I have a massive passion, obviously for books, if you didn't already know that. Um, but I also have a passion to get into trade publishing. And currently I work in academic publishing, but I really wanna make that move. So, here I am at the book fair and I can't wait to bring you along. So let's roll the footage. So that was a great first day. I felt so overwhelmed, so excited with the buzz, the energy, the excitement in this massive arena. Um, I remember just walking in and instantly feeling like, this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life. If I can get into trade publishing, that is me sorted. Um, so anyway, I had so many seminars that I wanted to attend and we started off at the Author HQ listening to making your work in progress stand out now a while back i decided that writing wasn't for me i had maybe written three or four book drafts of three or four different ideas and i'd sent them out to a few agents sent them out to a few publishers and i either got no's or no response from a lot of them and i just kind of gave up i thought it's too difficult maybe I'm just not good at it, maybe I don't enjoy it, but going to this seminar made me realise that, one, I need to stop giving up on things, I think I get so overwhelmed with wanting to get that instant success that I just stop, because I want to be the best at everything I do, which isn't possible because there's like whatever billions of people in the planet, um, so yeah, making your work in progress stand out was a great talk i think it really inspired me i came away with so many notes i mean whoa um but it, they were basically saying that don't send anything out until you're on your third fourth draft because you're probably by the end of it gonna have to have done about eight or twelve drafts which i sat there and i was like oh that's where i was going wrong i hate editing i hate editing my own work and i really found that there was some helpful tips and tricks to copy edit your own work so that was great and then we had the author of the day which was colson whitehead and i was a buzz with like 
try not to get so overexcited when I saw him on the stage. Um, he wrote Harlem Shuffle, The Underground Railroad, The Nickel Boys, and his uh, sequel to Harlem Shuffle, Crook Manifesto, is coming out very soon. I think he said September. I could be wrong. But... He was incredible and the person chairing the talk as well was very insightful. I think I did go to a few talks where the chair wasn't as good but the one doing Colson Whiteheads was amazing and I really felt like we got a insight into how um, <laughs> Colson Whitehead works, how he writes and that gave me even more inspiration and I really loved hearing about his inspiration for Harlem Shuffle, how he wrote Crook Manifesto and I think I made a note to go and reread Carlson Whitehead so that is definitely something I'm really excited to do when I go back to York. And then the next one that I went to I believe was one on how I write and now this was a talk with a couple of authors the first one being Janice Hallett um, and I really want to read her book The, Mis the Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels and it is on my TBR so I was really excited when she walked on stage I was like oh might get a bit of insight into that book and then the other one is Juno Dawson who wrote Her Majesty's Coven and she's also wrote um, written a lot of non-fiction around the LGBTQ community and they were both incredible the tips and tricks on how they write how they best kind of surround themselves into that kind of state of being was very inspiring I think the whole first day I felt so inspired so motivated to go back to York to get back into writing to really put all my energy into that and to put all my energy into getting into trade publishing as well because one day it will happen I just know it um so that was great and then we went on to the tech theatre where I listened to a speech on how to create a successful influencer marketing campaign. Now this is something that I don't really have much knowledge on but it was more from the perspective of trade publishers and how they can hire this agency to do their own kind of marketing campaigns with influencers so it's kind of a coefficient, co- I don't know, I don't know the word, but it all benefits one another in this circle. So that was quite interesting. It was a very busy talk, so my focus definitely did wane, especially when it's not something I'm like super into. Um, and then I think we have one more seminar. So that is, how many did I go to today? One, two, three, four. So the fifth one of my first amazingly jam-packed day was how have books become a key focus for streamers and broadcasters in the global marketing place? So this was all about how TV producers, film producers are looking for books to adapt because basically books are already this established place they've got an established fan base they've got established worlds established characters and it is so much easier to adapt a tv um to adapt a book into a tv series or a film because the book's already there rather than writing your own from scratch so this was amazing there was a professor i can't remember her name i think it was hannah griff hannah griffith griffith and um, she was a professor of history at one of the unis in London, I believe. And she worked on Bridgerton. And that was amazing to hear about how TV producers and film producers for a while have been saying that period dramas just aren't something they're looking for, especially when they're books. But then you have the case of Bridgerton and Downton Abbey and things like that. So it really kind of shows how... There is an international marketing for Regency romance and, you know, that's there, that market is there and books are so valuable to produ production companies because they are often existing franchises. Um, so that was a great speech, but oh, it was a day. It was such a day. I think when I first walked in and you see HarperCollins and Penguin side by side, um, it was overwhelming because they had so many books that I've read this year, so many books that I want to read this year. And I just hopefully one day I'm at one of them stores, I'm at one of the big five. Um, so yeah, I really can't wait for Wednesday and to see what that holds.
is another sunny day in London and another very exciting day. It is day two of the London Book Fair and I have had another great day. I would definitely say yesterday, Tuesday, was more motivating, more inspiring. I felt so kind of inspired and innovated to come home, to read more, to write more, to go on YouTube more and talk more about books. Whereas Wednesday was very much more on the how to get into trade publishing side. It felt very more real, I think, because currently at the moment I've had a lot of job kind of uncertainty and scepticism and just trying to get into trade publishing is incredibly difficult and then also when you're attending talks from people that have been in trade publishing that have the knowledge of trade publishing and of working for the big five and they're saying how incredibly difficult it is to get in how i believe 75 percent of job applicants for the publishing industry are all going for the same jobs in editorial departments which is something i'm doing it makes it very difficult so I think one of the examples they gave were <laughs> you could have 4,000 young hopefuls going for one position at Penguin and obviously only one person gets it out of 4,000 and you know how the job market is changing, how working from home isn't as prevalent and it makes people that don't particularly live in London not able to get those jobs or not even considered even though their talent might be there. So it was a tough day in terms of I had to keep reminding myself that one day I will get there. Um, so that was difficult, but I did go to four amazing talks. Um, the first one was preparing your work for publication. So this was more so of a talk for somebody that had a written book. I don't have a written book that I would want to be published. Uh, <laughs> I definitely have an idea that I think these past couple of days have really inspired me to get moving on. Um, so this was a really great talk. We had somebody from, I believe, somebody from Penguin, uh, somebody that represents Maggie O'Farrell, which I was like, I think my eyebrows went, uh, <laughs> she made eye contact when I did that. So that was quite funny. Um, but yeah, it was a really great conversation on how, you know, to build your community of authors. You know, if you're somebody that's starting out, look on Twitter for that community, go to writers festivals and really hone your skill. So that was a really great talk. Maybe not something that is applicable to me now, but I have the notes for when it is. Um, and then the next one that I was super excited for was the author of the day, which was Anne Cleves. And I'm a big Anne Cleves fan. I love the Shetland series and the Vera series. I mean, crime, if you don't know, if you haven't watched about four or five of my videos where all I go on about is my crime passion uh it was super exciting and she was basically saying how she doesn't plot or plan her books which is insane because when you read them you wouldn't think that they're so well structured you'd think she knew who the killer was at the start of the book but even she was saying as she's going along with vera she's trying to figure out who did the murder and i'm just like how in the hell I don't, it's almost like Anne becomes her characters and she talks about them as if they were her friends, which I found really common with a lot of the authors that were speaking. They were saying how their characters are their friends. They're so much in their own head that they forget that they haven't thought about a single real thing in a whole day because they've just been so invested in where their story is going. So that was a great, great talk, I thought. I think it was really exciting to hear about her her personal history how she has no kind of interest in publishing in terms of she hasn't worked in trade publishing but she enjoys writing and she's a great reader she was saying that if you don't read you can't write and it was just great i think i got a lot of helpful tips and tricks from her and then we came on to i think the most interesting talk of the day but also the most, uh, not soul crushing, because that would be really dramatic, but it, it made all my thoughts and all my suspicions about trade publishing seem real and seem verified. Because obviously when I'm talking to like friends and family, they don't 
obviously because they're not the ones applying for these jobs they don't sometimes understand the difficulties so when you're having people that have worked in trade publishing that have worked for the big five or still work for the big five telling you that it is incredibly difficult and to try and keep inspiring people to apply because it's so difficult and kind of saying how the publishing industry is inundated with hopefuls of people that want to be in the publishing industry versus the amount of jobs available are very slim so it was definitely difficult to hear a lot of that but it felt a collective to know that other people around me are feeling the same feelings they're you know they're worried and concerned about the future you know the talk did go into politics a bit how maybe our government could be doing more um i won't get into that because i'm not going to talk about politics on this channel but you know just from the perspective of one of the people on the um panel had set up her own independent publishing house because she felt so disenfranchised from the big five and how publishing needs innovation and the systems that publishing works within are so outdated and they just need a rehaul so if we can work on rehauling the systems from an independent perspective then maybe the big five will listen so that was a really great talk and then i went straight into the indie publishing the creative heart of the industry now this was a really interesting talk i think from me because I work in production it really gave me some skills and tips and tricks about how currently a lot of the big publishing houses only print in hardback which can kill the sales of indie publishers because they are then forced to do the same if they want any media attention and it's all about how we can do diff things differently if you work for an indie publisher or an independent and it was so inspiring so relatable i felt um very much so kind of validated in all my feelings that i've been having about the mo at the moment feeling disenfranchised with trying to get into trade publishing and not knowing what to do or where to turn to um but it was a great day nonetheless <laughs> and i was so just happy to be there i had so many walks looking at the HarperCollins stands, looking at the Penguin stands. And that brought me on to, before I left Wednesday morning, I was on Instagram and I saw somebody that worked for HarperCollins say that if you want a free copy of RF Quang's new book, Yellow Face, go to HarperCollins stand at 10am. So I was walking about from about half nine, round in circles, round the HarperCollins and Penguin stand, round and round and round, waiting to get a sight of something bright yellow. And I did. And I rushed over there and I got a free copy of Yellow Face. And it's like a proof copy. It's not like obviously the real hardback version, but look how stunning this copy is. I have to say HarperCollins booth was the most attractive because on either side it was bright yellow with these two eyes they are killing it in the marketing game whoever is in the marketing department are incredible so just putting that out there but i can't wait to read this on the train i am so excited that i managed to pick up a copy i'm already i started it on the tube back um so i'm at chapter two i can't wait so <laughs> I'm like so sad that tomorrow is my final day. I kind of don't want to go home and I'm already thinking about attending next year. So let's get into Thursday. Today has been my final day at the London Book Fair and I am absolutely devastated. I really don't want to go home, but 
I have been able to catch one last seminar, catch one last walk around the entire building. And the one I chose to go to because my train unfortunately was at lunchtime was the reaching the TikTok generation and how new formats and technology can be used in the marketplace. This was a really exciting talk. I think it is so incredible that now we have people doing marketing for companies for free, like me. So um, basically how, you know, things like BookTube, BookTok, Bookstagram have all taken off and how they all, how influencers basically do a lot of marketing for companies for free because they're passionate about books. And it really honed in on TikTok. Now I'm not a huge TikTok user. I'm trying to get there. I have no idea how to create a TikTok video, but I love watching TikToks, especially when they're about books. Um, so it was how to engage people from that perspective and how to use BookTok as a fuel for good and as a fuel for marketing. Um, and it was very interesting. I absolutely adored it. But I'm kind of going to end this video here because I do have to go home. I have some packing to do, not fun, and I also just need to get to King's Cross so I can relax because it's been such an overwhelming, such a fantastic, tiring, yet innovative, inspiring, motivating, all those words. I cannot wait and I really hope I get to come next year. If I don't get to come with my company, I will definitely be coming alone or off the bat of my own money just because I think it was so useful. It's so amazing to see people in a room who are so passionate about books it's something that has been a dream of mine for so many years and it was amazing so thank you for coming along to the london book fair 2023 with me i really hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe like and comment and i will see you in my next one bye